First Corinthians, lesson number 18. And we'll be going to First Corinthians chapter 13. This is lesson 18, but we're in 13. All right. I hope you got your running shoes on. Chapter number 13. And verse 1. Paul is still, we're still in the same, like I said a while ago, 12, 13, 14 is, is uh, talking about the same things, the spiritual gifts. Verse, number thir uh, verse 1 of chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Now, this is the chapter, obviously, on charity. You say, what is charity? A lot of the new versions change that to love. This is a, this is a, this is a highest degree of love. Uh, the reason the King James Bible uses the word charity, it wants to distinguish between just love uh, in the general sense and charity, which is of the strongest sense. Charity is giving. Giving and not expecting anything in return. Uh, the perfect example of this, for God so loved the world that He gave Charity, we talk about different charities that we give to. It's giving. And uh, this is the highest form of love. What Paul is saying in chapter 13 is, okay, though I speak with the gifts of the tongues of men and angels, I have the gift of prophecy, I can do all of these different gifts that I have, and if I don't do it with love for the people I'm speaking to, it's not doing anybody any good. You can do whatever. You can preach. Um, and uh, you can preach with the wrong motive. You can teach with the wrong motive. The whole purpose is, is to have love. The reason sometimes we get so passionate about what we're talking about and get upset when people take things out of context is, is that we have love for the brethren and we want them to know the truth. And uh, so this is what Paul is saying. All of these gifts, Church of Corinth, you're wanting the gifts. You want to be the giftful church. But if you're doing it and don't have the right motive and you don't have love for the brethren when you do it, it's nothing anyway. You're not going to get any credit for it anyway. Now, here's a couple points I want to draw in verse 1 especially. Though I speak with the tongues of men. We've already dealt with that because that's in Acts chapter number 2. The tongues of men are what? Languages. Uh, chapter 2 and verse number 8. If you want to write out the margin of your Bible, that's the tongues of men. Languages. Now, tongues of angels. Uh-oh, look at here. Tongues of angels. What in the world is that? Is there a language in heaven? Well, sure. You say, what is it? All right, let's look at uh, Acts chapter 26. Turn back to Acts 26 and verse Acts 26. This is the account. Paul's telling his testimony about when he was uh, on the road to Damascus and he ran into the Lord and the Lord shone down upon him and all that kind of thing. Acts 26. He's telling his testimony to King Agrippa. Look at about verse uh, 14. Well, 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them that journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the what? In the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? The language that he heard coming from heaven was Hebrew. You say, you got any more verses? Well, write this one down because I'm not going to go turn to it. Revelation 19, 1 through 6. This will give you uh, the, the word. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a Hebrew word. And that's what they heard coming from heaven is in the Hebrew tongue. So you say, what is the language? The tongues of angels. It's Hebrew. The reason I point that out is there are some who say, you know, well, I'm speaking a heavenly language that nobody knows about. No such thing. No such thing. No such thing. Okay? Amen. You say, well, you don't know. I do know what I'm telling you. And I can prove it. All right? Let's just do something. Turn to 2 Corinthians real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me show you this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, and then I gotta move. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, out of the body, uh, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such a one caught up into the what? Third heaven. That's where God is. Now Paul is referring to himself. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to... If you did hear something from heaven, it's unlawful for you to even speak it on this earth. So don't give me all the heavenly language. I'm talking to heaven. No, you're not. First of all, you ain't heard it. And if you did, it would be unlawful for you to speak it down here. If you want to speak the tongues of angels, that's Hebrew. Learn Hebrew, you can speak the tongues of angels. If you want to speak the tongues of men, learn French, Spanish, whatever. You can speak the tongues of men. See, the Bible's real easy to understand if you believe it and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let's go. Uh, verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. This is what it boils down to. Your motive for service. Your motive should be charity. Love for the brethren. You say, well, uh, you know, you know, a Muslim, he dies, and boy, that's uh, he's a he's a martyr. Yes, he has the wrong motive. You can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. Right. Uh, it, it, being sincere does not make it right. Uh, but having uh, charity in verse four, charity suffereth long. Uh, it's long suffering, in other words, it's kind. Charity envieth not. It's not envious. Um, charity vaunteth not. That's um, not boastful. What that word means. Is not puffed up. Everybody knows what that is. Doth not behave itself unseemingly. This is charity. If a person has charity, love for the brethren, they're going to be long suffering, they're going to be kind. They're going to not be jealous. They're going to not be uh, not boastful. They're not going to be puffed up. They're going to behave themselves uh, right. Uh, seeking not her own. Not self-centered. Doesn't think evil. Is not easily provoked. Thinking no evil. See there? Rejoices not in iniquity. Does not rejoice in sin and iniquity but rejoices in truth, beareth all things, does not expose other people's faults, believeth all things, what God said in His Word, hopeth all things, trust, future salvation of the body, endureth all things, doesn't give in, don't give up when the going gets tough. Charity never faileth 
Now stay with me. Charity never faileth. Verse 8. Has everybody got you looking at your Bible? Mm -hmm. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. There's coming a day when prophecies all are going to come to pass. And there's, I mean, there's, if when all the prophecies come to pass, then there are no more prophecies. You got it? Then, prophecies, they shall fail. Everybody look at your Bible. Whether there be tongues, they shall do what? Cease. What's the word cease mean? <coughs> Whether there be knowledge, it shall what? <coughs> Vanish away. Now let's keep reading. I'm going to go back. If that verse is true, and I believe it is, right? <coughs> verse 8. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. There, according to that verse, there is a time and place when tongues stop. Did you see that? Did I do anything to the Bible that is not there? <coughs> Verse 9. For we know in part. That means we don't know everything, just a little bit. And we prophesy in part. But when that which is what? <laughs> is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Is everybody with me? When that which is perfect is come. Y'all see what I'm holding in my hand? That is perfect. First Corinthians, they didn't have all the Bible yet. John and Milo Pappas didn't read, didn't write till what, 90? 90 AD? When that which is perfect is come. You remember reading in Mark 16 where it says, um, they confirmed the word by what? Does anybody remember? Signs. Why? Because there ain't no Bible. Now that we have that which is perfect, Paul says, for we know in part. That means I only had part of the Bible. I only had the Old Testament. And I prophesy in part. Revelation hadn't been written yet. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part is done away. When does tongue cease? When that which is perfect is come. Does everybody see that? Verse 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I wonder what he's talking about. Tongues being a childish thing. Paul said it's the least of the gifts. Paul says, I speak all kinds of tongues. And he's fixing to clarify some things in 14. Now let me give you this before we move on. Paul's writings are divided. Romans, 1st Corinthians, 1st Thessalonians, and Galatians was written during the Acts period. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon was written after Acts 28 when Paul was in prison. Do I see that? Okay. Tongues started back here with Moses. Started back here with Moses, everybody with me? And then started tapering off. Y'all see that? Started tapering off until it comes to a close. <coughs> you say, what are you talking about? All right, give me for instance. Healing. Healing. Divine. Now, what I'm talking about. Now, let me clarify. I believe God heals today. Amen. Let me make that clear. I believe God heals today. But God does it. You don't have to drive 
to Orlando, Florida to get your healing. You don't have to drive to a tent somewhere to get your healing. If God wants to heal you, He'll heal you right here in Dyersburg, Tennessee without you having to drive 12 hours to Orlando. You understand? <coughs> Nobody today, now stay, follow me, listen real good. Nobody today has the gift of healing. That means I don't lay my hand on you and as I'm able, I have the power to heal you. You say, oh, I've seen people do it on TV. No, they're not. When they go to the nursing home and clear out Jackson General and Jackson Regional, then you come tell me. Until then, blow it out your ear and go tell somebody and go play with the kids out in the kiddie pool somewhere. Don't come here with that mess. And so well, I can, if you do, buddy, if you got it, and you're watching this video, then you go to the nursing homes and you go to the, uh, the, the hospitals. And I, by the way, on your way, go down to St. Jude and, and heal all them kids down there. Yeah. Until then, close your mouth and don't, don't, we know how to read. Don't, don't mess with us. Hallelujah. You understand? I'm tired of them deceiving people. If you got it, practice it. Don't come down a little tent and say, well, and, if, and, if, and if the person walks away still limping and couldn't heal them, well, they didn't have enough faith. No, you didn't. Where was it? Oh, he <laughs> Let me give you this real quick now. I just, I get bent out of shape. I'm sorry. Acts chapter number 5. I'm going to tell you these because I don't have time. Acts chapter number 5. Acts 5. Peter. Y'all remember? Them people just walked and Peter shot them. As soon as it, Peter didn't even have to touch them. Acts what? Peter. Them people just walked in Peter's shadow. Boom. Healed. That's pretty good, ain't it? Acts chapter number 27. You can read it when you get home. Acts 27 by, uh, by no, it's 28. Acts 28. About verse 4. Paul's in, in the, standing by, or sitting around the campfire. Y'all remember the story? And a, and, a, and a viper came out and bit him on the hand. Viper. Poisonous. We're talking dead in three minutes. Paul shook it off in the fire and Paul never got a blemish on his hand. And the barbarians, the unsaved that looked at him, thought he was a god because he didn't die in three minutes. Why? Because he had the gift of Healing. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm giving these verses, about verse 7. Paul has a thorn in the flesh. Paul prays three times, Lord, please take it from me. And Paul still had the thorn in the flesh. Y'all see it tapering off? Y'all see it tapering off? Tapering off? Now watch this. You have to look at this. First Corinth, uh, First Timothy. Look at First Timothy real quick. First Timothy. First Timothy five. Paul wrote 1 Timothy, didn't he? 1 Timothy right here? 1 Timothy is after this thing tapered off, right? 
1 Timothy 5, 23, Paul said, Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. You know, we said, now don't, don't write that verse down and go, well, I'm going to the liquor store as soon as I leave here. <laughs> they didn't have NyQuil. They didn't have Robitussin and all that in these days. You had a stomach problem or whatever or something, something to help you. You drank a little wine for medicinal purposes. Now, if you've got a stomach ache every day, uh, you need something, you need more something, you need surgery. <laughs> but do y'all see 1 Timothy 5 over here? If the gifts of healing are still in effect, why do you need a little wine for the stomach's sake? Oh, I got one better than this. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse 20. He's closing, closing up shop right here. He's finishing up his little chapter here. And he says in verse 20, Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at my little what? Now Paul wrote that. Paul wrote that over here in 2 Timothy. Now hang on. Wait a minute, Paul. You mean to tell me that Peter healed a guy by just the guy touched his shadow? And you mean to tell me, Paul, that some snake bit you and didn't even bother you? You didn't die in three minutes. And now, Paul, you're telling me you can't even heal yourself. And now you're telling us to drink a little wine for our sicknesses. And now you're saying you left this guy in this certain city named Miletum. You had to leave him over there sick because you couldn't heal him. Why couldn't you heal him, Paul? Signs. These sign gifts come to a close when you stop dealing with the nation of Israel and now you start dealing with who? You see the difference? As long as you're dealing with Jews, you got Jews present. We got sign gifts involved, healings, tongues, diversities, and all that. After here, we go strictly to the Gentiles, and there's no divine healing. There's still healing. No divine healing is what I'm talking about. And no speaking in tongues. So find, somebody find tongues, speaking in tongues. In Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd, Timothy, Titus, or Philemon. If it's something we're supposed to be doing and just really important, it ought to be mentioned in every one of them. See my point? Now, let's go to 14, chapter 14. And boy, we fix it. Get in there now. I may go just a hair over, but y'all hang with me. Man, we, hallelujah. Has everybody got it so far? Now, verse 14, 1 Corinthians. Paul's still writing. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Why? Because prophecy is, that's sort of like preaching and proclaiming and preaching and prophesying. That's every time in those lists, prophecy is first. The best gift. Tongues is last. Release the gifts. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why? For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Okay. People say, oh, look at that. Speaking in an unknown tongue. That's a heavenly language. No, no. Paul says, in church, out here, I'm praying. 
I start praying in Hebrew in front of my church, having the blessing over the offering before we pray, or before we uh, have the offering. I start praying in Hebrew. I'm not speaking to anybody in the congregation. Why? Because they can't understand me. The only person in the whole wide universe that knows what I'm going to say is who? Now follow me. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why? For no man understandeth it. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Everybody in the congregation are going, what in the world is he saying? And the next guy is looking and going, mystery to me. <laughs> Verse 3, But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth uh -oh. But he that prophesies edifieth the what? You see, folks, if you're sitting in church, you're speaking, nobody knows what you're saying, you're not edifying nobody. You're edifying yourself. You're going, look what I can do and y'all can't. Look what I know and you don't. Look how spiritual I am and look how not spiritual you are. Charity is not puffed up. You see? All right. Verse 5. I would that you all spake with tongues. But rather that you what? For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. If the church don't know what you're saying, if somebody stood up Sunday and started speaking in Spanish, you say, Preacher, what would you do? All right, number one. Well, I'd have to read on further to get where I, but I just what I'd do. I'd let them finish and say, okay. Does anybody know what this person said? No? Sit down, sir. Shut up. Don't say nothing else. Because you're not helping my church. If don't nobody know what you're saying. And if ain't nobody here that can tell us what you just said, you, you could have just cursed the whole church out. And nobody knows it. You say, you do that? Ask some of my people. <laughs> Verse 6. You say, oh, you ought not do. Hey, am I responsible? Yes. i got to watch my sheep. I ain't going to just let anything come and go. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Except I speak unto you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. And even things without life given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they have a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? You say, all right, what's that? What's Paul giving an illustration? All right, somebody that don't know how to play the piano. Sunday morning, they say, I don't play the piano. Okay, I don't know. Do you know how to play it? Oh, yeah. They get up there, just start. <laughs> and they look at the crowd and go, sing along. <laughs> and we're going. There's no distinct sound. It sounds like garbage to me. How are we supposed what song are you playing? Oh, I don't know. Y'all just supposed to know what I'm doing. That's Paul's example. If you don't have a distinct sound, how are you going to edify the church? Now, verse 4, or 8, excuse me. For if a trumpet give an uncertain sound, who should prepare himself to battle? Well, in the Old Testament, or in the Bible days, uh, they would play a certain sound on the trumpet. They would prepare, prepare you to battle. Uh, they'd play another different kind of sound that told you to pack up, we fix it, and move on down to the next town. Every time they play something different on the trumpet, it meant something different. If they played a certain sound on the trumpet, they know, hey, there's an enemy coming in. We gotta get ready. So you gotta know what sound means what. If you don't, there's mass what confusion. Verse nine. So likewise, ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood. How shall it be known what is spoken? 
for ye shall speak into the air. You just a hot air bag. <laughs> Verse 10. There are. It may be so many uh, are many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them, if without signification, are, uh, uh, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. In other words, one that don't know the language. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may ex uh, excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Alright, I'm in church. I pray, I'm speaking of French. My speech is unfruitful to everybody in there. It's not doing anybody no good. Is that proper English? As long as you understood. <laughs> now, i got to hurry. got to hurry. This unknown. People say, unknown. There's an unknown tongue. Okay. Hang on. Everywhere in the Bible, unknown is used. It's only unknown to one party. In other words, if I if I just if if I was in the Corinthian church and I was in this time period and I had the gift of tongues and I started speaking Greek, that language but would be unknown to y'all. But you bunch of Greeks over here would what? No. No. It's only one unknown to one party. You understand? Let me give you a verse. Uh, look real quick at Acts 17. Acts 17. Acts 17. <laughs> Acts 17. This is from the sermon on Mars Hill that Paul preached. Acts 17. Verse 23, well, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown what? The unknown God. Now, they were worshiping they were worshiping a God that they didn't know who He was. Let me ask you all a question. How many in here know who God is? <clears throat> then He's only unknown to the unsaved. <clears throat> He's known. Unknown is only unknown to one party. One group or the other. Either the hearer or the speaker. So when you hear unknown, so look, that's what they say. Here's what they say. They, why I'm making the distinction. Oh, there's an unknown tongue that nobody knows but only heaven. Well, we've already dealt with that. The unknown is only either on my part or yours. Somebody knows it. And maybe others don't. All right, 1 Corinthians 14. I got to get this done. Or am I? All right. Or was a barbarian? Verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. That's why when we sing, we say, Stand, turn to page 285. Everybody on the same hymn song. Everybody on the same hymn book. Why? Because everybody needs to understand what we say. We don't need confusion. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen? How are you going to say amen to something you don't know what's being said? For thou verily give us thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God I speak with, uh, with tongues more than y'all. Paul knew Hebrew, Aramaic, several languages. Latin. He said, I speak, I know more tongues than all of y'all. You understand? Watch what he says. Get this and get it good. Yet in the church, 
I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice, uh, that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Look at there. He said, I'd rather speak five words that y'all can understand than ten thousand you can't. Why? Because I speak ten thousand, y'all don't know what I'm saying. We're not edifying the church. Five words that y'all understand that we all can understand. We edify the church and I'm able to teach others also. Verse 20, Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be mean. Verse 20, Paul says this, Look, don't get mad at me. Don't be a bunch of kids. Grow up. That's what he said. Verse 20, 1, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto his people, and yet for all that will they will not hear me, saith the Lord. All right, verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for us. Not to them that... But to who? Them that believe not. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Y'all see that? Now, why ain't y'all hearing this on TV? <coughs> Why didn't y'all hear this talk on TV? Verse 23. Alright, here's the rules. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned. In other words, unlearned. That doesn't mean stupid. That means unlearned. They don't know the language. Or unbelievers. Will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. He understands what the preacher's saying. He gets under convictions about what the preacher's saying. And he's judged by the word that he understands. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Verse 27, you ready? Some of you not ready for this. If any man speak, now we're, we're in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, tongues is still, we hadn't got to this Act 28 point yet. So tongues is still in full effect in 1 Corinthians. Why? They're still going to the Jews first. All right. Y'all ready? If any man speak in an unknown tongue in the church now, the context is when the whole church is coming together into one place. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course. What's that mean? Well, no more than, well, two, no more than three, and they have to do it by course, which means one at a time. And then you got to have what? So it's not all of this 20 folks are all gyrating, eyes rolling back in their head and hollering something that nobody in their brother knows what they're saying. If you want to follow the rules, one at a time, no more than three, and when you get done, you have an interpreter. You said, why did you say what you said while I go about sit down, hush, shut up? Okay, verse 28. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Y'all see the Bible. That's where I get my authority. Sir, sit down, ma'am, hush. If there's no interpreter, please hush. Talk to God in private. You can talk to him in any language you want to. He understands them all. But don't say it out loud because you're confusing my people. Y'all see that? Don't get mad. That's the Bible. Verse 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. You say, what does that mean? 
All right, if a preacher gets up and preaches, hey, if he ain't telling it right, the other one judges it. Hey, preacher, this ain't, this ain't right. You ain't telling it right. Verse 30. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Everything's done decently in order, you see. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. If everybody's doing it at the same time, nobody is help, getting helped. And the spirits of a prophet are subject to the prophets. You're responsible for what comes out your mouth. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Y'all see that? Now before we read any further, what are we talking about? We're talking about what? Tongues, foreign languages in the church. Is everybody with me? That's the context. In the church, when the church is gathered together, verse 34, let your women keep silent in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Now some of you ladies are going... You mean I can't? Now, listen, context. Context. That does not... The Bible says in Psalms, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So what can a woman do? She can testify. She can sing. That doesn't mean you, you can't say nothing. What does that mean? That means you can't speak in... Every church I've ever been into where it was going on, that was a who was a doing it. They forgot to read 1 Corinthians 14, I guess. <laughs> Let the women keep silent in the churches. Pertaining to what? Tongues. For it's not permitted unto them to speak. For they are commanded to be under obedience as also uh, saith the law. And if they will learn anything, they didn't ask their husbands at home. Now don't y'all don't get all upset. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. That does not mean she can't say something in the business meeting. That don't mean she can't testify and say I'm the Lord's Savior. That don't mean she can't get up and sing. That don't mean she can't get up and play the piano and sing a special. That does not mean that. It means she can't speak in tongues in the church not the woman can't speak in tongues in church. I said the woman can't speak in tongues in the church. And if somebody does speak in something in tongues in church, she needs to speak. she don't understand what's going on. She's wait when they get home. She asks her husband, "What do you say?" Don't get mad. That's what he says. <coughs> oh boy. I feel the tension in the room now. <laughs> in the class right here, does that mean what? Yes, you ask a question. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about one thing, and the context is one thing only, and that's what? Speaking in, in the church. Woman's not allowed to do it. Does everybody see that? Did I take something out of context or read something backwards or upside down? That's what it says. Why ain't we hearing this preached? Every time, like I said, every place I've ever been, they the first ones that jump up. There's like 20 of them. And nobody knows what they're saying. Nobody asks for an interpreter. And I leave confused, not knowing what's going on. Verse 36, what? Came the word of God out from you? Came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things I've written unto you are the commandments of the Lord. You know what Paul just said? Paul said, if you don't like what I just said, let it be known these are the commandments of the Lord. That's basically what I just said. I can't help it. Get, look, get, don't get mad, Brother Jerry. I'm just a mailman. Get mad at the mail. 
It comes from Him. If you won't get mad at Him, help yourself. Don't get mad at me because I'm delivering the mail. Don't get mad at the mailman because he brought you a bill. Just pay the bill. It ain't the mailman's fault. Now, y'all ready? Y'all ready for this one? Y'all ready? You don't like anything I just said for these last two hours? Then Paul says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Amen? Amen. If you don't like black and white English right there, all I can tell you is just be unlearned. That's all I can tell you. You say, that's ugly. That's mean. That's cruel. You're supposed to be nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. And that concludes 1 Corinthians.